Now I'm gonna tie a pattern for you today that I've been wanting to tie for a really long time. I just haven't quite gotten around to it yet. Hello everybody, welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So the pattern I'm talking about today, it's the Golden Girl. Now I got this one from uh, Roderick Haig Brown, he was the creator of it sometime in the 1940s. The version in this fly patterns of British Columbia is almost a really a classic old school salmon pattern. I mean, he's got Indian crow for the tail, uh, polar bear fur in it, and then some golden pheasant crest for a topping. So it's a pretty elaborate fly, you know, the original one, but the version I'm tying tonight, I got from Dave Hughes, American Fly Tying Manual. Now this is a more modern version. It doesn't have the Indian crow tail or the polar bear, and he just skips the, the golden pheasant crest for the top. So I really like this pattern, and I've tied it for years. I've fished it for years, and it's done really well for me here in Maryland. I mean, it's originally tied as a winter steelhead pattern, but I tie it in a little bit smaller sizes, maybe a six and an eight streamer hook, and fish it as a streamer, and again, it's done great for me. Now one other note, it's not the easiest pattern to tie. If you tie a few of these and they look shabby, don't worry about it, fish them anyway. I've got plenty of them in my box that look shabby and they still catch fish. And the one you're about to watch me tie, it certainly didn't turn out perfect, but hey, it's going in my box and it's still going to catch fish. So it's a great looking pattern. I think you're going to like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, a golden girl. Now this one, Certainly not perfect. Those wings are a little bit crooked and I think that head's just a little bit too big. So let's see if we can do a better one right here. I'm tying this on a size six. It's a three X long streamer hook. And I'm gonna step up my thread to a 140 denier. And I'll lay a base down to the start of the bend. Now for the tail on this, just orange, orange hackle fibers. This is from a cheap, strong saddle hackle, and it doesn't take too much, and it's not gonna be too long. So just take a, a small piece about right there, get your distance. Yeah, maybe a hook gap is fine, so let's catch this in right here. And decide, do you wanna cut that or bury it? I'm just gonna bury it. It's not a real thick tail, so it's not gonna create too much of a step. It's a little bit thicker back here than it is up there, but we can live with that. So I'm gonna put some tight wraps just to try to bind that down. And now let's tie in our, our uh, tinsel, flat tinsel. Now here's the first place I'm kind of cheating on this. Instead of a mylar tinsel, I'm using a, a gold uh, holographic. And this is more of a plastic-like tinsel. I think it's just easier to work with. And the holographic part really helps hide some imperfections. So let's, you know, I need that to go a little farther back. I've got some black thread showing up under that tail. So let's take a, another wrap back. Okay, now that's gonna be fine. Let's take our thread all the way back up. And we don't have too much going on in the front. So you can take this and put it almost all the way up to the eye. I'm gonna drop a half hitch right there just for fun. Now, Optional step here, but I like to do it. Just some super glue. Small drop right here, and then try to spread it out. And it does work well with this plastic-like Mylar tinsel. Uh, it really holds it. And that, I might have too much on there. We'll see in a minute. But it will just push that bead up toward the front. And if it does, we just wipe it off. So take your time here, wrap these, you know, slightly more than touch and turn, slightly overlapping if you can get it. Just take it all the way up front. Okay, when you get it up front, go ahead and catch this tinsel off with a couple of wraps before you snip it. And you can tell this body is far from perfect, but that holographic tinsel kind of helps you hide a lot of imperfections. So um, I think we're gonna be fine right here. And one other point is that our hair underwing is gonna lay pretty close to that body. So 
that'll also help hide some imperfections. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and put our throat in. So same orange hackle fibers we used for the tail and just take about the same amount right here. Catch this in right underneath. And it's not real long, certainly not gonna to be to the hook point. I mean, it's a streamer after all. So just a couple wraps right there. Check it, are you coming off the bottom? Yeah, I think so. Close enough. So let's go ahead and snip off this excess. And that spun it around on me a little bit, but we can fix that. All right, couple more wraps to lock it. And now let's put our underwing in. And for this one, Roderick Hague Brown says dyed orange polar bear fur. So take your orange polar bear fur, and if you don't have that, just use calf tail. And if you don't have orange calf tail like this, just use white. We're putting so little of it on, I don't think it's gonna make a big difference. So see that clump right there? That's probably twice, and maybe three times as much as we want. So just grab some of the tips and then thin it out at least by half. And then measure your length and to the bend of the hook. These oranges are different shades, but that's okay. A lot of them that I've seen have been exactly like that. So do a pinch wrap right here. Let's get this caught in and try to make sure we stay on top. That will help with the wing in just a minute. But you see, it's kind of laying flat against that, that body. So even more material hiding our imperfect body. Let's go ahead and snip this off. Okay, so far we got a tail and a throat and an underwing and a body. Really only got one more component, and this is the next place I cheat, is take your two golden pheasant tippet, whole feathers this time, and how I cheated, I take two of them and lay them down and then I'll glue them together. So I just put a drop of UV resin right here where the fibers are kind of meeting and then dried it. If you're gonna tie half a dozen of these, I'd go ahead and do all these feathers at the same time. And now I need to get my thread corded back up a little bit and take it back here to where I want that first wrap to be. And I'm just gonna lay this right on top. Now, if you wanted to be, um, you know, pretty much traditional, you'd probably split these wings and get some of that calf hair up in there, but I find that's just a little bit hard to do and it doesn't give you that much. So I'm just gonna to try to push it right down in the middle and then catch this on right there. My goal is for this to be in the plane of the hook, so you know, kind of perpendicular, so I'll do a couple of loose wraps right there and then check it and it's slanted a little bit, so let's back that up and see if we can Get it a little bit more upright. One, two loose wraps right there. And now I can go with a tighter wrap. So that, yeah, that's close enough. So I'm gonna lock this in right there. Well, I'm gonna snip that, these butt ends off before I really lock it in. And it's, uh, that caused it to spin a little bit on me, so I'm gonna have to spend a couple extra wraps to, to really lock that in, tighten my thread up, and then go back up front. Okay, now that wing is, is pretty much in the plane, so I'm happy enough with that. We do have a butt end right here we need to snip off. And I'm gonna tighten my thread, flatten, or not flatten it out, cord it up a little bit, and go right back to the eye, and then build this big head right here. Not huge, but big enough to put a nice drop of head cement on it and make it nice and glossy. So I think we're good with that right there. Let's go ahead and do a whip finish. I'm gonna probably just do a four turn. So I've got, I'm gonna definitely put some resin on this and give me a nice shiny hard head. So there you go. Not uh, a real easy fly to tie with this wing. 
Um, and if you don't get it right, just, just practice. It's not beautiful, but is this gonna be a fishable fly? Yeah, absolutely. I've got ones in my box that look much worse than this and probably caught fish with them. So that's it, everybody. Pretty nifty pattern. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.